Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to look at WebSockets in Angular. This video will be based on the tutorial that's currently available on my website and I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description below. So let's dive into this. Now Angular utilises something called ReactiveJS or RxJS which is a, essentially a JavaScript implementation of reactive extensions. This is a library for composing asynchronous and event-based programs using observable sequences and is thus perfect for working with WebSockets. Simply put, RxJS allows us to listen to new messages from a WebSocket connection and then perform an action when any event occurs. Now, a good example of this is a real-time chat application. So say we have three people connected to our chat application. If one of them sends a message to a WebSocket server, the WebSocket server can then broadcast to any of the connected WebSocket based clients and those clients can then react to whatever message event is passed to them. Now, the best way to interact with WebSockets in any Angular application would be to encapsulate the communication with these WebSockets within a service. Now, if you're unfamiliar with services, then I'll leave a link to a tutorial that I've done on Angular services in the description below. Now, let's dive into the code. So to get started, we're going to be creating a very simple service that will connect to any given URL and return an RxJS subject that we can then subscribe to in any other service or component in order to listen to any incoming messages from that connected socket. So in order to do this, we're going to use the Angular CLI and we're going to do ngg, which is generate a new service service if I can spell and we're going to call this WebSocket. So now that we've got our WebSocket service we want to come into it and we want to do the following import star as rx from rxjs slash rx and within our class definition we want to define a subject so rx.subject message event and below this we want to define a connect function and a create function and I'll go into more detail about what these two do in just a second. So public connect is going to take in a URL and it's going to return rxds.subject and it's going to essentially do the following. So if this subject up here in the service is undefined it's going to then try and create that subject. So let's code that up. If this dot subject, or if not this dot subject, this dot subject equals this dot create. And we're going to pass in that same URL. And just below it, we're going to do console.log successfully connected. And just append the URL to that statement. And then finally, we're going to want to return this dot subject now that we've defined it. So let's now define our create function. And this is going to be a private method. And it's going to take in the same URL that we saw above. And again, it's going to return an object of rx.subject message event. Cool. So the first thing we want to do in this is define our WebSocket. So let WebSocket equals new web socket. And we're going to pass in the URL that we passed in above here. Cool. Next, what we want to do is define an observable. So let observable equals rx.observable.create. And within this, we're going to want to do the following. So obs, which is short for observable, or observer, sorry rx.observer message event and next we ECMAScript 6 notation and we're going to do websocket.onMessage equals observer.next.bind OBS and uh, next we want to do websocket.onerror equals same again dot bind obs and finally we want to do websocket on close equals obs dot complete dot 
bind OBS. And finally, we want to return return websocket.close.bind and websocket. Cool. Next, what we want to do is define our observer. So let observer equal, and within this, we're going to find our next function. So next has data, and this is of type object. And again, another we ECMAScript 6 function. And we're going to essentially state in here if websocket.ready state equals 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 websocket.open websocket.send json, json dot stringify and data. Cool. Finally, what we want to do within this function is return and rx.subject, rx.subject.create. And this is going to take in both the observer that we de de defined here and the observable. So, observer, observer, and observable. Oh, I spelled that. Observer. Cool. Perfect. So now that we have our WebSocket service, let's define our chat service. Now we can do that by calling ngg service and chat, and that'll create this file here. Now within this file, we're gonna do the following. Import observable and subject from rxjs slash rx. And we're also gonna to want to import our WebSocket socket service from, and because it's in the same directory, we just call it websocket.service. Perfect. Finally, we want to call import environment from, and this is gonna be environment mint slash environment mint. Perfect. And within this environment file, we're going to be defining the chat URL that we're going to be connecting to. So open this up and open up the environment.ts file. Now within this, we're going to do chat URL and we're going to set this equal to websocket forward slash echo dot websocket dot org, which is a really nice and simple echo websocket service that just echoes back whatever message is sent to it. Coming back into our chat service, we now want to do the following. So public messages and subject message. Now we've not defined this type yet, so we're gonna come up here and we're gonna do export interface message. And this is gonna have an author, which will be of type string and a message, which will also be of type string. Now within our constructor, we want to pass in the WebSocket service. So private WebSocket service, WebSocket service. And within the constructor body, we want to do the following. This.messages equals subject message WebSocket service. And we're gonna to want to do the following. So dot connect and passing in our environment dot chat URL. And we're gonna map this. So response message event to message equals and we're gonna do let data equals json dot parse and response.data. And we're going to return the author, which will be data.author, and the message, which will be data.message. Cool. And I'll just fix this little typo. Now, that's all we need for our chat service. Next, what we want to do is actually use one of our services. So we're going to go into our app.component and we are going to do the following. So import 
chat service from chat.service and within our app component class we're going to do the following so constructor private chat service of type chat service and we're going to subscribe to messages so chat service dot messages dot subscribe and function here we're going to basically just console.log response from WebSocket server and we're going to pass in the message here. So we need, next what we want to do is just to keep it nice and simple we're going to define a message and the author is going to be Elliot Forbes and the message is going to be howdy folks. And finally, we're going to want to define a function. So send message. What this will do is console.log new message sent from client. And we're going to want to do this.chatservice.messages.next. This.message. And that should be us good to go. Now in our app component.html, we're gonna to want to get rid of all this stuff. And we're gonna to want to do the following. So Angular 2, webs, uh, not 2, sorry. Tutorial. And we're gonna define a button. A button. And it'll take a click event and it's gonna call send message send message excellent let's just save what we've done and when we open up this in the browser we can see that we have errors and it's because we've done something really stupid and forgotten to add the provider so coming into app.modules we're going to do import websocket service from websocket.service and import chat service from chat.service. Nice and simple. And then in our providers array, we're going to do the following websocket service and chat service. And if we now open up the browser, we can see that our application has successfully compiled and we can see our button. Next, what we want to do is try and click that send message button. And you can see in here, new message sent from client. I know this is really small. You might not be able to see this in the video. And it has also received a response from the WebSocket server of type object object, which obviously can be fleshed out further should you wish. Now, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you found it useful. And if you did, then please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more programming-based tutorials. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.